Hey, how's it going, guys? This is your boy Hayes, and today we're on the Shadowlands pre patch, and I've got an interesting spec and build for y'all. Now, this one is for the dual wield crowd. Obviously, I've been focusing a lot on two hander because I absolutely enjoy playing two hander and I love the play style of it, uh, just on a frosty K in general. But dual wield does have some interesting things going on with it, and it really kind of came out to light with the recent global cooldown changes. Now, in the past, I have enjoyed certain kinds of dual wield builds generally based around dumping runic power on the targets, and it seems that build at least for the pre-patch is going to be coming back as a viable burst option and i'll go ahead and show you in this video why and i guess we'll just jump into it guys so let's do this always starting with the pvp talents and regular talents so let's do this as for level 15 we're going to be running icy talents now you're probably wondering well that seems like an interesting choice trust me it is but it'll make more sense as we get further down and start explaining things as for level 25 talents, we're going to be using Runic Atun, which generating Runic Power, because Runic Power for this build is going to be extremely important. How fast you can generate it, and of course, how much you can retain while bursting. It's also going to come into a massive play on how much burst pressure you're going to be able to deal with this current build. As for level 30 talents, I mean, Blinding Sleet, Asphyxiate, maybe a mass grip if you're trying to catch a gate. But, uh, you know, obviously those are just completely interchangeable. But generally for dueling or just, you know, PvP and you'll take asphyxiate. As for level 35 talents, we're going to be running Frozen Pulse because we are going to be generally trying to runic starve ourselves and also when it comes to Azerite trades, kind of runic starving yourself before dumping in this big burst would be a viable option for dealing more damage, but I don't believe it's going to be an avenue to take since overall I don't feel like you're going to be rune starved at all during this burst to tell you the truth you're probably going to have more runes that you could possibly know what to do with for the majority of the time since you're not going to be really using obliterate during your burst now you're, you're starting to think where I'm going with this I think you're, you're getting a little bit of a hint at this point anyways as for level 40 talents death pact wraith walk absolutely interchangeable um as for the level 45 talents we're going to be running hypothermic presence now this is very important for this burst build to be extremely bursty and to kind of have an avenue um around using a two-hander for massive burst damage now hypothermic presence right now is currently bugged so you can't use it but even while not using it the damage this uh spec still capable of doing is really high and the burst pressure is extremely high i'm talking there are times where i'm able to generate over 10k hits constantly on a target which is absolutely massive like 10k worth of damage constantly like it's it, it's kind of nuts uh honestly and with the recent global cooldown changes it's been kind of crazy to kind of like find this out i mean honestly like i came up with this really early this morning while i was just kind of messing around with things ran some math ran some numbers and just kind of overall came up with this and was like whoa what a global cooldown anyway so let's go ahead and get to the good stuff as for level 50 talents ice cap um, just reducing the overall cooldown to pillar just to give you kind of a little bit more consistent pressure there Obviously, we're not running obliteration because as I've said previously, we're not relying on obliterate damage like at all for this I mean you could take it if you wanted to kind of weave it in there a little bit here and there for a little bit of extra Maybe slightly overall pressure, but personally i'm going to take ice cap for the I, I really feel like this spec's going to need some kind of constant generation of damage uh, to make up for putting kind of all your eggs into that burst basket, personally. So as for PvP talents, we're going to be running Heart Stop Aura. Um, you know, it's just, it's too good not to use the majority of the time. And as for Necrotic Aura, now, as you can seemingly see where I'm going with this build, you're going to be relying heavily on Frost Strike damage or Frost damage or anything among, you know, magic damage like that. Necrotic Aura is going to increase your damage by 8%, which is, you know, 8%. As for the third one, you're either going to be running Chill Streak or you're going to be running um, Chill Streak in your neck. But personally, I would probably stick with Blood of the Enemy with this build just because your crit is... You want crits, but at the same time, you don't want to dump your stats into crit. So Blood of the Enemy allows you to kind of circumvent that and still generate and benefit from massive crits without you know going into that. So it's generally pretty good for this kind of build. Um, going over your Azerite, so it'll make a little bit more sense. I 
like I'm kind of indifferent when it comes to Azrites at this point about it, but I would stick with some kind of Frost Strike Azrites um, overall for this kind of build, and then toss in. I wouldn't say Frost Whelps, like Frost Whelps does pretty good extra burst on the opener of the fight, but for this build, I would definitely stick with some kind of Frost Strike extra damage um, for Azerites. And then as for the Necklace, Blood of the Enemy, as I said before, is going to be really good. Conflict and Strife can be switched out with Blood of the Enemy if you don't want that extra burst and you want like extra resilience for survivability. But at that point, if you wanted extra survivability, you might as well just go two-hander anyways because the two-hander spec is going to be a lot more survivability orientated than this dual wield spec would be because the majority of your burst pressure is going to be consuming runic power to deal that damage instead of using obliterate since dual wield obliterates are a lot weaker than two-handed obliterates and obviously the runes are going to be using on your weapons which we'll be getting to right now for dual wield is more orientated towards generating rune power and dealing frost damage than trying to deal melee damage with obliterate and ruin the fallen crusader and running obviously a versatility haste build as you can see i'm running a versatility mastery build which is uh what you're going to want to run to you know be viable with a frost strike build um, but yeah, so Enchants, Razor Ice, Hysteria. Hysteria is pretty important. The reason why you want Hysteria is you want your Runic Power to be up to 120. When you have 120 Runic Power and you cap on Runic Power and you Runic Dump, you combine that with Hypothermic Presence and you're capable of generating 8 Frost Strikes within that burst. Blows your mind, right? Without it, you're only going to generate 5. Now, if you kind of add in a little bit of Obliterates there, obviously you'll be able to generate a lot, of bit more, a, lot, a lot more within that pressure, but you're trying to generate as much burst pressure with this build as possible so you want to sink as many frost strikes into a small window and really capitalize on let's say that blood of the enemy or anything else in that burst window now when it comes to empowered rune weapon it's so long that you're going to have it the entire time so you're not really too worried about that pillars 15 seconds so that's also a pretty long cooldown which you can you know get a little bit of extra frost strikes in there but now that we know the stats we know enchants we know some azurites we know our neck pieces next up we got to go ahead and jump into um just how to burst on this. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Let's go do that. So to burst with this build or really how you're going to kind of set yourself up for a burst is going to take a little bit longer, obviously, than a two-hander since you can't throw a pillar right away, throw in a howling blast at range, and then come in with a big old obliterate smack right on top of your target's head. Fairly nice to be able to do, but with dual wield, you're going to have to generate runic power beforehand. Now, if I was going to be setting up for burst, even if I was like, let's say I was dueling, if I was going to be dueling with this spec, I would definitely try to change the target and stay back and generate as much runic power as possible but let's say i was forced into combat or had to fight something i would pop in power instantly go into the remorseless winter and i would cap myself and hopefully get a hysteria proc as fast as possible now you want to burst within your empowered rune weapon so you have the extra haste and runic generation for frost strikes in the near future when you're throwing up your big burst now obviously this has a 20 second um a 20 second on use on this so you're gonna have a very big window to generate that rooting power to lead yourself to that burst to burst with empower up so you have a bit of leeway there where you want to pop your power generally you know before you burst five ten seconds you pop it at the same time because you didn't realize you had so much runic power go ahead and do that doesn't really matter that much you just want to maximize your runic power as high as possible before you go into this burst i mean heck you could even most likely do it at like uh, 100 runic power and you'd still get away with it based on how much runic power you're probably going to generate outside of empowered rune weapon or well, using empowered rune weapon with this build and you'd still most likely be fine but we need to go over a couple macros before i go ahead and just kind of cheese the burst for you guys um as for chill streak now you're going to throw up a pillar chill streak macro and obviously chill streaks on the global cooldown pillar of frost is not so that's kind of where the big changes are like trying to play this build before or something along these lines of this build the global cooldowns made it so clunky you couldn't benefit from the actual damage increases or the burst pressure of frost strikes beforehand and it wasn't very good but with the global cooldown changes you're able to insert things in certain places and not consume global cooldowns so you're able to generate a massive amount of burst pressure at a single amount of time with dual wield which is really cool to see i'm really happy to see that a bursty version of dual wield is at least viable on the ptr i'm not sure how this is going to translate obviously into shadowlands but i know there's are some talents in shadowlands that will increase your frost strike damage so maybe this might be a viable way for dual wield to play pvp in the future i'm not 100 sure but for now 
we've got the uh, Pillar of Frost Chill Streak build, which, you know, you throw that out there, it's going to throw out your Pillar, it's going to throw out your Chill Streak. Now, after that, you're going to hit your macro of Blood of the Enemy and Hypothermic Presence. Now, the reason you're doing this is so you can AoE with your massive um, Blood of the Enemy, and that's going to generate extra crit damage and crit on the target. Now, that's going to make Chill Streak hit for massive amounts. We're talking 6, 7, 8k damage. Uh, on the target alone just with the chill streak bouncing blood of the enemy is going to come out boom that's an extra two three k with that 8k out bouncing you know it's just dealing massive amounts of damage that's close to you know 9 10k damage already but at the point that hypothermic presence drops it's going to cause your runic power spending abilities to be reduced by 35 percent causing your frost strike uh runic power cost to go from 27 down to about 17 now if you do the math on that that's going to allow you to achieve eight frost strikes inside of burst now obviously the ability's bugged right now so we're only able to achieve five without trying to dump in other resources from other areas to generate more frost strikes within the burst but still that's going to make you be able be capable of doing four to five k frost strikes now if you're already dealing you know uh six seven k uh chill streak damage already and then you're dumping in four to five k strikes uh, frost strikes you're going to be dealing you know 10 11k burst pressure with this ability so let's go ahead and i'll show you guys what it kind of looks like all together here because i know i know y'all want that burst to do a wield and those global cooldown changes made it a lot easier to do now this was what i'd be called quick bursting let's say i was dueling as this spec or i was in a battleground you know someone's coming at my face they're gonna charge me you're gonna get in close on me i'd throw in power early just to generate the runic power now you want to make sure you get off a of howling blast brock so you can generate um so you want to get your dots on the target. Now, right now is when I'm throwing up my big damage. Boom, 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 boom. Everything's coming out. Big chill streak. Frost strikes are dropping. And we just see massive damage being pumped out right now. Now, obviously, I'm going to get that downtime because hypothermic presence can't drop eight right now because it's bugged. But we're still capable of dealing a massive amount of frost strike burst pressure um, within that small area. Now, crits are obviously very important because that's going to cause your frost strikes to hit so much harder than they previously could. All right, we're gonna do a burst here with a little bit more, a uh, little bit more pre-planning, so we can actually pump out some, some bigger damage, bigger damage. Because of course we got to get our procs, we got to get some things up. Now I'm getting a little bit closer here. I'm gonna throw up in power here. We're gonna go ahead and throw up our cooldowns on this target, do some massive damage, and just dump out them big frost strikes. Come on, there's the biggins, there's the biggins, there's the biggins we like to see. And of course we would get a lot more frost strikes if we were able to actually benefit from hypothermic presence. But that is what we're working with, guys. You can see my chill streaks still on cooldown, quite a bit of cooldown. But anyways, guys, that's it, man. That's how you do it. That's how you get that big dual wheel burst right now. I'm actually excited to see that uh, dual wheel gets this kind of a play style and gets actually some positive burst generation uh, in the next expansion, at least in the PTR. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like on the video if you did. Until next time, this was your boy Hazed.